So our first attempt at this back in the early days was we got a list of uh, products from, from different folks in different communities and different groups. Said nothing's off the table. Tell us what a water supply of the future. Don't limit it. So we got a list of 300 products uh, in the first list. And one of them was actually uh, holding a, an iceberg down from the North Pole and bring it to the mouth of Tampa Bay. And I, I was shocked that we didn't go with that. It was, really <laughs> was mind-boggling. That wasn't the winner. But in that initial list, we screened it down, screened it down, screened it down, and we got to a manageable list that the board said, okay, these projects need to be studied in what we call a feasibility stage. So they went to feasibility, they, we hired some engineers, they looked at affordability, the environment, how, how these projects affect the environment, sustainability, they looked at a lot of factors, and they got down to the winners, and I already named some of them, the desal plant, the surface water treatment plant, the reservoir. And so then we set off to build it, and we did. So um, speaking to reasons three, four, and five are the three projects that are in feasibility now with our latest master water plan. We have uh, looked at things. We're going to need water in this region in 2028, about 10 million gallons a day. And we also need about another 10 million gallons a day in 2035. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about conservation uh, is a big part of that, too. If we can conserve, we can possibly put off building those projects as soon as we think. And I'm talking about a, pro a program we started about a year ago called WaterWise. And it's uh, all six member governments have participated in it. And it's an offering of 11 rebates to all the residents in the Tampa Bay area if you're eligible. Uh, low flow toilets, uh, moisture sensing irrigation systems, water cooling towers. We're offering rebates. And our goal is to uh, reduce consumption by 11 million gallons a day by the year 2030. Hoping to stave off that second 10 MGD in 2035. But the first 10 MGD, MGD we're gonna build in 2028, we need to do some projects. And so there's three projects. Reason three is our first project we're looking at right now is expanding the surface water treatment plant. The plant that we have today has been in operation since 2002. We call it the workhorse of our system. It's worked very well. And so we're looking at expanding it between 10 and 20 million gallons a day by optimizing it and also adding a few things to it and that may get us 10 to 20 MGD. The second, or our, my third reason why is the expansion of the desal plant. It, we're into a 25 MGD plant right now. We're looking at another 10 MGD by changing the free treatment, some piping, and the reverse osmosis. And so we're hoping to get another 10 from that. And the fifth reason and our third project we're looking at is a very unique project we're partnering with Hillsborough County, and they have a project called SHARP right now. It's called the South Hillsborough Aqua Recharge Project. And what they're doing is they're putting in reclaimed water on the coast in wells, uh, treating the, the reclaimed water, putting it down, and what it's doing is doing two things there. It's forming a water bubble in a non-potable aquifer zone, and it's not allowing the salt water to intrude inland anymore. It's blocking it. But it's also doing the second thing is adding pressure behind it, back pressure, which is raising the water levels inland. And so Swift Mud has a net benefit uh, policy. Uh, currently, that area is not a candidate for a groundwater well fuel, but if you can show a benefit that you're doing something, you can take advantage of that and possibly get permitted uh, at a distance. So we're working with the county on a lot of things. They're working, they're, they're moving that project along to do something to reclaim water, and we're going to take advantage of it possibly. We're looking at credits to pay them on a cost per thousand. So the water they're putting down, we would pay them for that. The one thing, it's not a one-for-one -one exchange. If they put one gallon down, we aren't going to be able to get one gallon out four or five miles away. It, it's a ratio that we have to model. We've looked at things, and we think it's about 75%. So if they put down 10 million gallons a day on the coast, we possibly could take 7.5 million gallons inland. So we're working hard on those three projects. Um, the board is going to be making a decision. Uh, we're going to bring uh, 
something to them with those three products in late 2022, and they will pick either one or more of those products. And there may be something else out there, but that's the schedule. Reasons three, four, and five, those three products may change over the next year or so as we're doing things. But reasons one and two will not change. Tampa Bay Water is here. We have a successful track record of 23 years of regional cooperation. <coughs> And we're not going anywhere, and we will continue to plan for the future, for not only now, but for future generations. And I would be glad to start talking about some questions and answers. <laughs>